How are you doing today? I have a question to ask you. I might have an answer. What you got? If you have $100,000, what would you do with it? Well, what would I do with it? And what most people do with it, I guarantee you, are going to be different things. So I cannot tell you what to do with your money, but I can give you some ideas because there's going to be a lot of things and a lot of options you can do with that money. I just want to put it somewhere and not worry about it. Okay, saying that makes a little bit different because what I would do with that money would be different than what you would do with that money because I would swing trade uh, leverage ETFs, which has got a lot of volatility that most people probably wouldn't understand or want to handle. And then some people would take that money and buy a rental property or multiple rental properties, and you can do that, but then you have to manage it and do work, and that's more work. So if you want to park it somewhere and not really worry about it and have it making you money for later in life, then I highly suggest an ETF, and this is the one I'm going to refer to. Okay, what is an ETF? An ETF is an exchange-traded fund. You use a ticker symbol to buy these on the stock market through your brokerage firm, like Fidelity or something like that. But I am not a financial advisor, so I can't give you advice on what to buy or tell you to buy it. I'm just going to tell you what I like. And then you can read all the information I put below my video to make your own decision to do whatever you want on your own terms. That sounds fair enough. Okay, I'm going to share some information on this particular ETF so you understand why I like it so much. If that's what I wanted to do, is set something aside to grow. Okay, thank you. I would have to pick the Swab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF. Okay, you said you have $100,000 and you want to invest it somewhere just to make money and uh, to have your money grow. So before I start showing you this calculator where I'm getting all my numbers from, my years invested 25, assuming you go live at least another 25 years. You said $100,000. And the initial dividend yield currently on this SCHD is 3.78%. And expected annual dividend amount increases, I put 10%, and I'll show you why in a minute. Expected annual share price appreciation, I put 7%, and I'm going to show you why in just one second. So before we get to the numbers, I'm going to show you where I'm getting them from. Okay, this is the ETF, and this is the 10-year return annualized at 7.05%. This past year has been a 1%, 3 years almost 6%, 5 years almost 6.5%, and 10 years 7%. So you can use any of these numbers you want, but when it comes to dividends, I try to be as accurate as possible. And since this tracks the SP 500 pretty closely, I went with the 7%. So you can put any number you want in there. Okay, for the numbers for your dividend growth rate, you have the three year compound 510. The three year is 11.44%, five is 13.69%, the 10 is 11.11%. 11 .11%. I put 10 in the calculator just because it's lower than the lowest one of these just like a worst case well not a worst case scenario worst case scenario could stop altogether but the dividend trailing 12 months is 3.78 and the dividend growth rate trailing 12 months is 5.7 percent so there's my starting dividend at 3.78 if you was to buy this ETF today and get in at this price and the growth rate in the last year was 5.7 but over time, it's usually around double digits. So I went with 10. So is it safe? Swab US dividend uh, ETF is safe. In my opinion and in the opinion of professionals are here on uh, Seeking Alpha. So here's the ratings and ETF grades right here. There's momentum, expenses, dividends, risk, and liquidity. All green, A plus, B. It's all really well. They got a whole rating, honestly. I honestly don't even pay attention to what they put on their ratings right here. But I look at their scores on their ratings and stuff like that to see what their opinion is on their dividend safety. Okay, here is a price return of SCHD and SP500. And you can see the price return SP500 is 142% and the SCHD is 100% over time. Now, this goes back to uh, November of 2013. They're pretty much in tandem. And right here, after the big old knockdown of COVID, then the SP took off, but it came back and they're about the same right in this area. And now uh, the swab ETF has been flat. Whereas SP 500 went up and big dip down and then back up and then it's rolling back over. And the swab has pretty much been flat. So let's get to the total return. 
to get a better picture. The total return of Swab is 173% and SP500 is 192, so it's pretty close, very, very similar. The total return is the dividends plus the price, share price, actually. So it's the two combined. So this is actually a better tail, in my opinion. This is what you really need to look at as a total return. Total return, they're pretty much in tandem with each other. Oh, that's the dividend calculator. Now that you know where we got the numbers from, and you know why. I like this ETF if it's something I'm going to put away to let the money grow and everything like that. Now, if you watch my other videos, you know what dividend chowder is by now. If you don't, you should really watch my videos to know what dividend chowder is. Dividend chowder is important. So right here, the expected annual dividend amount increases, I showed you where I got it from. It's been going 11%, but I put 10 just to be more humble. Uh, the dividend yield right now is 3.78. So with these two numbers right here, it meets the chowder rule that I discussed in my videos. So we got $100,000. It uh, pays out quarterly in your dividends. This 378 is annual, not quarterly, but annual, but it divides it by four and pays out quarterly, just so you know that. DRIP means direct reinvestment program. When you go to buy this stock with this ticker symbol in your broker firm, you can click to set it up in DRIP. If you do, this is the scenario right here. All right. So what it does is it reinvests the money back in. You start up $100,000. The first year, you'll get $3,833.92. If you buy it now to lock in $3.78, you'll get that in dividends for that year. Now, remember, you have to pay taxes. The dividends, qualified dividends of 15% federal taxes. You'll pay on your income on dividends, unless it's inside of a Roth IRA. But if it's not in a Roth IRA, you'll pay taxes on your dividends. So then your, your new balance is going up to 110. You'll make more money doing this ETF than you will sitting in a bank. So let's go on down, say 10 years later. 10 years later, you're getting $12,000. If the dividend continues to grow as it, as it has historically, you should be sitting around $12,000 a year in dividends. So you'll make $1,000 a month and never spend any of your original money. And your original money is now at over doubled at $248,000 and you're getting $1,000 a month to live on or do whatever you want. But this is reinvesting, okay? So this is a direct, direct reinvestment program. So if you say you live 25 years, your money is now over a million dollars on that 100,000 and the dividends paid out 104,000. And your new balance is over 1.5 total right here and then this right here is the total amount of dividends you've been paid let me go up to the top to show you the that right there right here cumulative dividends so you had a hundred thousand dollars you put in this ETF and in year 12 you've made a total in dividends alone over a hundred thousand dollars 12 years the original hundred thousand and never spent any of it Okay, let's say you don't want to direct reinvest it, and you just want to have it come out. So you let no for your drip. Your dividend is still going to be paying 15%. So what you do is now you have your money coming out every time it's paid, and then you can spend it and do whatever you want to with it, or buy more shares, whatever you let to do. So in year one, you're getting almost $4,000. That's more than you're going to make. A lot of places. Now I know people say you can get a high yield savings account to pay out 5%. I know because I have cash sitting in my Fidelity account if making over 4.9% in annual interest. But they don't understand the big picture of how dividend chowder works. The big picture is if you want to put money away somewhere safe, you get something that grows their dividend. And this is a very good solid ETF that you really don't have to worry about. So your hundred thousand dollars is three point seven eight. So that's less than four point nine that you can currently get or so five percent in uh, high yield savings accounts. But this is what a high yield savings account won't do for you. So in a short four years, your yield on cost. What I mean is the, the amount that you're receiving in dividends six thousand eight hundred dollars is six point eight percent of the original 100000 You didn't add any more money in. This is growing because of capital appreciation. Now we all know the stock market can go sideways and down and back and forth. 
We know that. So this is just a flat 7% average growth every year. But their dividend has been growing and staying pretty consistent even in the bear markets. So this this will grow. So your yield on cost is still going to grow. So in 12 years, your yield on cost is 10.99. And in four years, like I said, you'll be making yield on cost of what these banks do right now. But if the Fed starts lowering interest rates within four or five years from now, which they might, if they start lowering interest rates in four or five years, this the banks should not be paying out 5%. So again, this is the better option because you're getting in now at a good yield and it's going to grow. So yield on cost is 38% in 25 years. And let's say 10 years from now, it's 9%, 15 years is 14%. So this is the better than a high yield savings account. Yes, a high yield savings account is flat and it's FDIC insured and all that stuff. But if you don't mind the ups and downs of the market and just worry about the constant dividend payout, this here should be the best bet long term. Because this gives you the best opportunity to increase your money and have money coming in every month. And when you get into retirement, you'll have more money coming in to help you out with whatever it is you need in retirement depending on how old you are. So 10 years from now you have an extra 9,000, 15 years from now you have another 14,000. So that would help into your retirement. That's why I like dividend chowder a lot. And then if I wanted to just buy an ETF and not worry about it, then I would get something like this. Thanks for all this information. I will look at the links you provided.